Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to Coffee with Craig, where we talk about all things firearms, firearms policy, politics, culture, media, you name it. We're talking about it right here on Coffee with Craig. So please take a moment, like, and share the program so that your friends can join in the conversation. Also, if you have not already done so, please remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel as well as follow us on Facebook so that you can get the alerts as soon as we go live. Finally, I want to remind you, as I always do, visit fpcgear.com. That's fpcgear.com. It's a cool place to, fi to find uh, coffee mugs, hoodies, T-shirts, all sorts of Pro 2A swag, and know that every penny that you spend will go right back into the fight for our right to keep and bear arms. So you can support the Second Amendment, and you can look good doing it. That's fpcgear.com. Well, Mike and I are still here at uh, Fort Benning, Georgia. We're still here uh, celebrating and enjoying the Ganey Cup. Yeah, the Ganey Cup, 2019 Ganey Cup, best scout squad competition, and it's been a blast. It has been. It's been a lot of fun. Um, we had a chance to talk with some talk with some folks here, hear some very very cool stories, and, and actually see a lot of history just right here on the base. Yeah, it's great. You know, I think the, the, the biggest treat so far though is here at the Ganey Cup. We got to interview Sergeant Major Ganey. Oh yeah. That was that was that was amazing. To meet, to meet the man awesome. it's named after. Very 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 impressive individual. Let me tell you. And and his mentor that was with him, Sergeant Major Regan. So we got the top Sergeant Major's mentor, who's a top Sergeant Major. So. It's um, but today we're going to talk about uh, a, a different type of history. Um, you all are are you all know uh, Senator Dianne Feinstein, a good friend of the gun owner. Oh yeah, absolutely great friend. <laughs> great friend. Well, uh, you guys know there was a uh, recently there was a synagogue shooting, a shooting in a synagogue in uh, Poway or in San Diego, uh, California. Uh, the individual, 19-year-old individual, used a sem a centerfire semi-automatic rifle. Uh, he wound up uh, shooting three, uh, wounding three, and killing one. Yes. Eventually was uh, arrested. Uh, actually, he was uh, he was uh, uh, stopped. Halted by a good man with a gun. Right. By a good by a good guy with a gun, which. By the way, they keep saying that never happens, and yet and still it keeps happening. Yep. Go figure. So her solution, instead of making sure that we have more good guys with guns, her solution is, well, gee, let's make it so that individuals under the age of 21 can't purchase long guns, can't purchase a rifle. In fact, she said uh, on Monday, she said she's introducing a piece of legislation uh, that will prohibit, now she says, them from being able to buy assault rifles. Now, I, I'm using the air quotes because I know some of y'all out there get mad at me whenever I say the word assault rifles, but I'm quoting the senator. Let me, uh, let me just ask you something, Craig. We are here at Fort Benning, Georgia this yes. week. Uh, have you seen any uh, assault rifles running around uh, assaulting anyone? I have, not, I have not seen any assault rifles because they're all over, all over the place. Yeah, because it's not military-style assault rifles here. These are military, military assault, assault rifles. Yes. And you, I mean, you and I, we've been, uh, we've been eating at the Chow Hall. We've, uh, yep. we've gone to mm -hmm. the movie theater. We've been to the bowling alley. Mm -hmm. Have you seen any military assault rifles assaulting anyone? Uh, no. Okay. No. All Absolutely right, just, no assaults by the assault rifles. Maybe they have... No military assault rifle assault free zones. That must be what yeah. it is. Because yeah, they pay attention. Exactly. Yeah. Well, you know, and the interesting thing is, is that once again, here on the base, you actually have uh, individuals, 18 to uh, 17 and over. Yeah, 17, 17 and over. Uh, using these assault rifles <laughs> and, and other very cool stuff. But. Uh, and it's just funny. It's, it, it's interesting to me that once again, at the age of 17 or 18, uh, we can bring them to a place like Fort Benning, Georgia. We can train them, and then we can send them off to defend American interests abroad. But for some reason, they're not going to be able to defend their own interests in their own home. Well, no, that's not important. That's not no. important. Yeah, because, uh, you know, it's, it's clearly the, the weapon's fault and, uh, and, and the undue influence that the weapon has on an 18 to 20-year-old is enough to cause mass murder. Well, and, you know, it, it raises another question because, see, in the state of California, we actually have a, quote-unquote, ban on these assault weapons. Center, uh, center fire semi-automatic rifles in California with detachable magazines are now banned. Uh, if you own them, they are, they are either featureless, uh, they have some sort of a workaround that makes it so that the magazine cannot be, deta cannot be de easily detached, um, or you are, or, uh, uh, well, or it's registered. Right. Right. So, or, or you have to have it registered as an assault weapon in the state of California. The interest, so the, the first question is, well, wait a minute, so he wasn't even supposed to have the firearm that he had. Because also, by the way, let's just be real clear, in the state of California, you're not allowed to purchase uh, any firearm, including a long gun, 
uh, if you are under the age of 21, meaning the law that she says she wants to put in place in order to stop this tragedy is already in place in California. And uh, what good did it do? So we're going to make a new law right. to make people obey the law that they yeah. disobeyed. Exactly. Uh, that makes sense. That makes sense. That's pretty much that is pretty much uh, pretty much where we're at with uh, uh, the good old senator. Listen, these 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 don't work, you, folks. You get that right. You see, we're being a little uh, facetious here with you. It's uh, you know eighteen to twenty, and you're, you're just taking away their rights to protect themselves. They're adults. They're out on their own. Uh, you know, for the, they can be if they want to. I mean, I'm not saying anything bad if you're living at home in your parents' basement until you're twenty five. Just Stay off the internet. That's all I would say there. But um, <laughs> just, uh, you know, we're taking the rights away from these people, you know, to, to protect themselves, to protect their young families at that right. point. You know, this this doesn't work. Craig, you made the perfect point. We're here where 17-year-olds are in the military carrying actual military assault weapons. Uh, you know, they're, they're, they do have their training with them, but nothing's going wrong. Nobody's running around crazy. We have our own... 26th Amendment to the Constitution that says you are smart enough and an adult enough to elect the leader of the free world and right. all other elected representatives. At 18, you can do that. You can do that. The U.S. Code says the organized and unorganized militia of the United States is 17 to 45 years old. So at 17, you can do all of that. But you just can't have a gun to do it. Evidently, you can't have a rifle. You can't have a long gun. You, otherwise, uh, Diane Feinstein would, uh, would would come after you with her with her you know with her scary. <laughs> what well, you made the great point you know at the age of 18 you are liable for your actions and your decisions cr criminally and civilly right correct you are you are able to vote uh, you are treated like a, an, a, a full-blown citizen and adult in all areas of the law and now for some reason we've decided that we're going to sh restrict this fundamental right for really no reason. When you consider, you know, when you consider that that yes, a significant amount of gun violence is is between is is by done by those between the ages of 16 uh, and 24 or 25. But almost every single time, and the even bigger factor is is that it's almost always gang or drug related. Yes. And the firearms that are used in these crimes, number one, are almost overwhelmingly handguns. Which, by the way, 20 when you uh, you can't get to your 21 anyway. Right. Right. Um, <laughs> And almost always they're they're stolen. <laughs> almost always they are they they are purchased. They were purchased on the black market because why would a why why would even a any sort of a reasonably intelligent individual why would they buy a gun to use in a crime that can be traced right back to them? Yeah, it's, it just doesn't make sense. You know, you have these individuals that uh, if you really believe in their head that they're going to say I'm going to commit a murder. Uh, well, I, I definitely won't be committing any misdemeanors uh, to, to purchase this firearm or attempt to purchase this firearm, you know, underage, uh, or to be caught in possession of that firearm, or to, you know, steal the firearm. Do you really think they're worried about the little crimes that mm -hmm. Diane Feinstein is trying right. to create when they when their objective is murder? Right. Well, and and I know some of you are thinking, well, hey, she's in the Senate; it's not going to go anywhere. What you need to understand is this bill was already introduced. She already introduced this bill once, uh, Senator. Uh, Jeff Flake was the co was the co sponsor of it. Um, what a strong backbone on that guy! Oh yeah, yeah. incredibly strong. Yeah, well, yeah. we're also dealing with the fact that the president has said that he will support the idea of raising the limit to twenty one. So understand that it's important that we kill this bill in the Senate. It's important this bill gets killed in the Senate because uh, if it gets to the House, it's going to pass. And if it gets to the White House. Uh, I'm not saying the president will sign it. I'm just saying that he has said that he's open to supporting that idea. So let's just let's not let's not give him the opportunity to do that. Yeah, you know, and we've talked about this. Yeah. You and I, I take a little bit uh, different take on it. I have heard him say these things, but it's been sitting at at the table right. where he's trying to make the deals. He's trying right. to bring sides together. Right. You and I have also both heard him say in the past week that our Second Amendment rights are protected and they're going nowhere. Yes. No, I I will I will I'm I'm right there, but I've 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 learned to judge him as I've said before. I've learned to judge him not by what he says, but by what he does. By his actions, yeah. Yeah. But based on what he said, I would rather not take a I would rather not give him the opportunity to Agreed. do Agreed. Agreed. Let's 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 not That's even bring saying. this to him. Yeah. Let's, exactly. let's let's get this taken care of and and, uh, and squash before that even has the opportunity to happen. Exact mundo, exact mundo. Anyway, folks, hey, that's going to be it for today's coffee with Craig. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, please remember to like and share these videos and tell your friends about the Firearms Policy Coalition. We are the home in the fight for civil rights. Gotta use them or you're gonna lose them. You guys take care. 
If you like our videos, follow, subscribe, like, and share.